All right, I am going to record this video on the Joying uh, Double Den head unit in my Jeep Wrangler. I guess you can kind of see it's a Jeep. Uh, whenever I focus in, you won't be able to see it's a Jeep, so I'm just showing that up front. This is a universal head unit, so it doesn't matter. You can have it in anything. Uh, let me show you here. You can see I can, it kind of floats off the dash like a tablet, sort of. I guess that works a little better. Yeah, so you can see it floats off the dash like a tablet. It's like just stuck on the dash, essentially. Alright, so this should show the head unit. I am going to record the screen with this Mobizen app. And assuming I don't screw it up, it should have the recording over here somewhere. Alright, so now... Uh, so here's the joining. Again, I have this... This is... Uh, I don't believe this is the actual... Yeah, this is joining setup. This isn't uh, anything else. So this is I've moved these apps to the home screen. I put this widget here. Uh, but we'll just go over the settings of the head unit itself. I have a separate video on Pandora and all the music apps installed, so you can just uninstall them. You, know, you move things around like a normal Android tablet. Uh, here's your widgets over here. Uh, mine is kind of a Frankenstein. I bought a uh, the one I got. Uh, well, they sent to me. I didn't buy it, but it was the one that was a vertical screen, and then uh, it didn't fit with the Jeep the way these uh, stick out. So then I had them send me a smaller screen, and they sent me different software to make it. I'll put a link in the description for what I believe this one would be if you bought it directly. The software is pretty much the same on all the ones that, except for that one that was a vertical screen that could change uh, orientations of course but since uh, I Frankenstein this one I don't think these buttons work properly but I've had other joins and they work just fine right so that one when they went back it just took a little and then this should be navigation that's volume so volume does work uh, and this should turn the screen off well, again. I tried to reset those but that could be me messing it up so don't take that on the unit I don't think that's a problem with the head unit itself that's either the way I set it up or because I Frankenstein it but again I've had these in the past from joining say so came to say that these buttons normally work just fine but in theory you know this would turn the screen off uh, this will take you back to home this is just your back button that's the shortcut your navigation here your volume settings I really don't use those very much at all. Anyhow, even in my other head units, I usually stick to the ones up top here. So, like, this is your home button. That's your app switching screen. And that's your back button. Uh, let's see. So, also, we have... So, let's just... You can swipe down here from the top. Uh, you get your general Android-style notifications. We're in my driveway. Uh, so we're connected to my guest network, Stranger Danger. Uh, this does have an option for mobile data. And I uh, said I was going to stick a SIM card in there, but I still have yet to try it. So I don't know if it works. Uh, in the past, these did not work well with the American bands, but uh, I don't know yet. This, I believe, just turns the screen off. Yeah, and then you just touch it to bring it back on. Obviously, it's my Wi-Fi. We can... Just do a regular Wi-Fi check. Our Wi-Fi. Uh, that button, I guess if I hit it, it will reboot. Let's just... Yeah, I don't want to reboot it, so I'm not going to. So I want to make sure my screen's recording. Alright, uh, standby. I guess it puts it in the sleep mode. Again, I'm not going to hit that because I'm going to mess up. Up here is your brightness, you can see. I'm adjusting that. Uh, and that's all we have. When we go to settings, it just takes you to the regular settings menu. So, uh, which would be the same if I hit these car settings here, right? But before we go there, we'll look at the app. So ignore this. This is the home screen. You can move these things around. Uh, you know, just like a regular Android, this goes to your apps. In your apps, they're all in alphabetical order. And then it goes to your widgets. I generally don't really use a lot of widgets, so I just have this one here to tell me the date. 
Uh, so again, you can move these however you want. This is your dock area, and then, then up here is a widget. And then here are just apps you can move into the dock. And of course, it would, if I had another screen, which you can. So now these will stay on the home dock area, and the rest of the screen is the, you know, the widgets, of course. Or the widgets or apps, whatever you put there. Uh, so currently I am connected to Wi-Fi, so I will have some data. Uh, there's a lot you can do to download stuff locally to the device. Uh, I don't have a SIM card in there. All right, I don't have a SIM card. I don't have a USB thumbstick or micro SD card at all. I'm just using the internal storage at the moment. Uh, so let's just go through here, right? So these are apps I've installed. Some of these apps I've installed, uh, like this. Let's say I want to uninstall Apple Music, right? Let's hold it. And there's that trash can icon. So when I hit that trash can icon, it should uninstall Apple Music. Uh, Google Assistant, obviously we know what that is. That's standard process. Uh, tell me a joke. So I'm not getting audio from that. I don't know if that's a setting I have turned off or what, but I don't use Google Assistant on these kind of head units. When I have an Android Auto head unit, I do use a lot of these features, but when I'm in a Android head unit such as this or say Kane or the SATA, I do not use the Google Assistant as much because I had the full functionality. I could just hit the buttons I wanted to hit, right? Ox would be if you had something else plugged in. I did not have anything else plugged in. So, we don't worry about that. Bluetooth. Uh, that would be if standard telephone stuff, right? If you have a phone hooked up, you want to play music. I did not connect my phone on this. I don't get a lot of phone calls in the first place. If I have phone calls, they're business phone calls that I take not in a driving environment. So, uh, there is a item where your contacts can get wonky like uh, it'll like it'll copy all your contacts and reload them to your phone I've had that happen a handful of times with these head units so I was kind of quick making these connections uh, but that's how you would access uh, the phone Bluetooth right and, but you can make it like a regular you know if you had it you can make phone calls uh, you know and if you want to do Bluetooth music that would be this app I do show both of these in a separate video. I'll try to put a link somewhere in here uh, for those videos, for this particular head unit. And the audio quality is just fine. I don't have any problems with the phone calls uh, or you know anything. It just, it just seems fun. All right, uh, we have a calculator in case you want to do some math in your Jeep. Uh, I obviously never use that. Standard Chrome browser. Uh, steering wheel control uh, so this will get a lot of questions about if you have a vehicle specific unit like in the past I've had units that were directly set up for a Jeep or I have a Deseda video on in a Toyota and it comes pre-wired up for you where it's just basically plug and play you won't have access to these features they're already programmed this particular head unit I wired up with a pack audio module. So that means I did get to program these individually. So let's uh, move the camera here. So over here you can see my steering wheel buttons. If I hit the phone button, it makes the uh, phone screen come up, which is standard. But this VR button, voice response thing, should be for the Jeeps you connect uh, that's not what I want it to do because I don't use that feature. So if I turn on Spotify. So you can see the volume control. So you can see the volume controls work on the steering wheel. Uh, I had to program those and the next, the other side will do the tracks which is all how standard Jeep stuff works. But this voice response button, I made a play pause button. So if you watch this, 
when I press the button, that will turn the play to pause. You got it, I might even pause, play. Pause, see. So that's pretty good. Alright, so that's how the steering wheel programming works. Now, of course, there's a lot. I have a whole video on that as well. Uh, it's not that complicated. If you've never done it before, it might seem complicated, but it's really, it's really not that bad. Uh, easy connection. I forget what that is. Oh, that's to make your phone like mirror cast sort of thing. I did that with one of my first head units, but again, I don't have much use for that. If I want an Android head unit, I want the Android functionality. I don't want my phone. If I want an Android auto head unit, then I want my phone connected. So, full disclosure, my next head unit I've already purchased is in my house. It's a Pioneer wireless Android auto head unit, uh, which I'll make a video on as well. That's because this Samsung Note 10 is so plus. Note, <laughs> that's because this Samsung Note 10 Plus is so good. Uh, I want to try the just you know try the comparison out with the wireless versus what I he use here. And also, I don't drive a lot anymore. I have a business job, so I have a business job. I have a traveling business job, so when I'm on the road, I use Android Auto a lot. So before, when I was just home all the time. This Android was the way to go for me, but now that I travel so much for work, every car, of course, has Android Auto. It doesn't have an Android head unit. I just kind of want to get the same in both worlds, potentially. But I'm not. There's nothing wrong with this head unit. I like it. It served me well. Uh, but yeah, the point of this is, I don't think replicating my phone screen on the head unit is worthy, worthwhile for me. Lots of people ask about that on the forums, but personally, it's not something I would be using. Equalizer. There's a lot of shit here. Uh, this is beyond my comprehension. I'm not good at these things. I've said in a previous video, I just want to make it sound good button. And I do think this head unit sounds very good. I've had the Alpine ILX uh, W650 in here before, and I would say this sounds as good, if not better. Uh, prior to that, I had a Sony head unit, which had problems, but the audio quality from Sony's are always great. I do not have the Jeep Alpine system. I have an aftermarket system uh, in the X subwoofer now, previously a kicker, kicker subwoofer, and it sounds pretty great with all of the above. Uh, so here you can see it's set to rock, and you can change it to various ones, which will make these adjust accordingly, or you can just move them manually, of course, if you wanted to. Uh, for me, the rock one sounds pretty good. It's also a surround sound. Uh, which I have turned off now, which you can turn on with this button. Uh, there's the bass enhancement button, uh, which I don't have that on. Uh, here's if you wanted to move the, you know, fader, balance, whole shebang, right? And then the bass filter if you wanted to adjust, uh, you know, bandpass or whatever that, that shit is. Again, this is all beyond my skill level. Uh, I don't know what setup does. Oh yeah, so you can change more stuff there. I don't, again, this is uh, not my forte expertise. I guess whatever the word is, right? There is a very, very detailed video, video on a join specifically. I'll try to put a link in the description as long as I remember. And uh, he goes into super detail. He tests all the shit. And it seems like this is a quality sound output from these uh, head units. Uh, his video's boring, I will say. Nice guy. Very detailed, but super long, and I got kind of bored with it. But the crux of it is, uh, it seems like the audio quality on these is greatly improved from the older versions. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. File manager. So this is if you, you know, you can just standard Android shit, right? So you can see what you downloaded. Like, for example, I am downloading... This, I'm recording this video now. I'll have to go to File Explorer to copy that to a USB whenever I take that out to put in this video, hopefully up here. And then you can see all these are open, and I can just hit close. All right, I thought it was going to cancel my recording, but it didn't. All right, so we got that going. Uh, File Manager Google, obviously, the standard Google app. Head unit reloaded. Uh, oh, I put that on there. I have not tried it. That's a way to make Android Auto work on this head unit, essentially, but I've never tried it. Maps I do use. Uh, 
I'm not going to click on it because I'm home. It's going to show my address mm -hmm. or area, which I don't want to show. The You can download with Google Maps specifically. Sp 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 specifically, uh, you can download your city, your town, your state, what have you. And it will work offline. So this is tied to my Jeep's GPS. And as long as I have the maps downloaded and I'm not on data... I can drive around just fine. Now, I could connect it to my phone's hotspot and get all the fancy shit with the traffic notifications and all that. But if you just want general GPS map functionality, you can use Google Maps and download your town, whatever, you know, your area. And it'll get you around. Uh, Mobas in, that's the app that I'm using to record this on. Music player is their built-in music player. So if you put in a thumb drive full of music, you would play it here. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't use that, right? That's not what I use. So this navigation is just a shortcut to whatever navigation app you have set as the same as this button here would do. So if I only had Google Maps, it would go there. If I had a third party uh, application, it would go there. Or if I had Waze tied to it, it would go there. So I haven't specified it. But if I specified it, then that would just be a shortcut. It's really kind of pointless. Operation guide. This is just your, you know, inter your, your guide and how to use the device. Uh, I've never used one of these. Alright, uh, Pandora's, you know, obviously, that's an app I installed. Picture would be if I download images on here, you could see them here, but I don't have... That's just an app. So there's, yeah, that's an idea of some images on here, right? You know, obviously, just say like a gallery app, essentially. Google Play Music. I have a whole video where I show all the various things on the music apps. Google Play Store. Obviously, just same. Google Play Store. You can see your apps. You can update them. Uh, Sanders stuff, right? All right. Uh, Radio, that would be if you want to use AM, FM radio. I do not use it. It works. Uh, I don't use it. I don't use the radio. I haven't used the radio since Sirius XM came out, I believe. Settings. Uh, this is the car settings. Uh, the app, the head unit settings, like Android settings generally. Uh, we'll go over those in just a minute. Uh, Spotify install touch assist is a super annoying little dot thing that you can put on uh, I don't want that so I'm not going to show it it's super annoying video player that'd be if you download your own if you have a thumbstick or hard drive full of videos it would work uh, you could you know watch videos on the head unit ways of course YouTube of course YouTube music those are all standard Android apps Z-Link is what sets up the uh, Android auto or car play features if you want to use those. I have not tried them so I'm not sure how well they work. In the past I've used them with a separate dongle and it didn't work great. I have a video on that for a different head unit. This is supposed to be built internally. Again, I haven't tried it because I don't use, that's not the way I want to use my head unit. So now let's do a deep dive and go through the settings here. Wi-Fi, this is all standard Android stuff, right? Wi-Fi, we'll just take you to standard Android looking for your Wi-Fi features data usage will tell you just how much data we use so you see I've used 5 point gigs over Wi-Fi in the past month 5.3 gigs uh, sim info I don't have a sim installed so if I did install sim I guess it should show that there again I haven't tried that I'm not sure how well it works more uh, that's just Android stuff right device. Now this will be more joining specific stuff as opposed to Android head unit stuff. Display, uh, the brightness level, there is a light and night version. So what that should do is dim the screen when I turn on the headlights. And it does. I don't know how well that's going to show. But when I turn these on, the screen does dim when I turn the head, you know, headlights on on my Jeep. My Jeep is not a daylight you know, it's not automatic headlights. It's an old manual switch, right? Uh, here's where you can change your wallpaper. There's some live wallpapers not built in, apparently. There's just various screens here, so I can set that there. 
and now I'll have a different screen there. So there's lots of settings there. I tend to like that one, but again, these are just built-in wallpapers. Obviously, you can install any wallpaper you like, and it'll work just fine. Uh, so display, that's all we have there. Wallpaper, I don't know what this display, that's showing your network activity. Auto black screen, that'd be if you want it after X amount of time just to turn black. Uh, I don't want that to happen. Sound. Uh, that makes the beeps when you press anything on the screen, which can get pretty annoying. Loud, that's the standard, you know, head unit feature, make the sound a little louder. Amp on off. I don't know if that's the internal amp or saying if you have your vehicle amp, you know, you have it turned off. Uh, subwoofer controls, that would, in theory, work if you had the subwoofer hooked up. Mine is hooked up a different way, so I don't use that option. Equalizer takes you to the screen that I showed previously. All right, and let's see what we got. So general, uh, press any key to start. Uh, that would be if, I don't know what that does necessarily. Brake wire for video in motion, that means you can play, so it makes it pretend like you have the parking brake pulls so like you can watch video while you're driving. Auto start navigation, that would make the navigation start as soon as the head unit started, it would launch Google Maps, whatever. On screen display time, I believe it's just showing the clock there. I'm not positive. Nope. I don't know what it does. A lot of this shit, I don't know what it does, right? Uh, mirror view and reverse image that will just flop, flip the screen when you put it in reverse, right? So you can see the car is on this side now, and then I'll turn that on. And now the Volvo is over here, right? Mute audio when reversing, so that means you put it in reverse, the audio would go lower. Small backlight control, small light control. That means it comes on at a certain time, and this means it, it's tied to my headlights, which is what I set it up to do. Default volume switch, I have it set to on, so now the default volume is 13 out of like, I don't know what it goes to. 36 so yeah so when I start the Jeep it'll be on 13 as opposed to whatever I had it on last like so even if I'm driving around and I have it cranked up to 30 which I would not do turn the Jeep off leave come back it'll be at 13 so this stuff uh, GPS mix and sound mixing scale I believe is to change the audio level like when Google Maps tells you to turn left or right versus the music playing I'm not positive because I always mute those navigation things I don't like them talking to me that annoys me but I believe this is where you would mix it together and I'm not positive one of them makes them louder you know makes the voice louder or the music louder I don't know which is which uh, this one I do use sound reduction when reverse so that means when I put it in reverse like say I'm listening to it at the default volume of 13 I put it in reverse it's gonna drop it down to level 10 or if I have it at 22 I put it in reverse it's gonna drop it down to level 10 that way I can just focus a little more when I go in reverse right you can turn that off, of course. That's the steering wheel settings, which I showed previously. Navigation app, this is where you would set the navigation app for this button or that other app, but again, that's useless to me. I don't know what map data copy, copy does. Couldn't tell you what that does, I don't know. Home launcher, this would change it to a different launcher, I think, but uh, some of these had just get a little funky if you change the launcher, some of them work just fine, like I've used. Uh, on different head units, I've used different launchers, so I'm not positive that that change or not. But I do like the way the Joy one lays out. This is a fine home screen. I can have my shit I need up here. And then, again, I'll stay in the app most of the time. Like I said, if I'm driving around, I'll have just Spotify on the main screen the whole time. I don't have the home screen up. I'm just listening to Spotify, and I'll have it ideally here. This app mark's a little bit small, but that is a spotify issue it does that on my tablet in my house when you go on horizontal it used to be really cool we used to have a large picture and then it shrunk it for some reason all right and that's all the general factory you have to put a password in i believe it's 3368 yeah so this is a very important feature sleep mode setting so if i just turn the head unit on like when you first set it up it takes about 30 seconds to fully boot 
If you don't change this, it'll do that same thing. It'll just not turn it off, turn it right back on, it'll be another 30 seconds. If I turn this on, it kind of keeps it like in a dull, like a, not dull, but like a low power usage mode. Uh, it doesn't impact the battery. Lots of people on the forums have tested it and it works just fine. I think you basically get 48 hours of it on a super, super slow, tiny power draw. That way when I turn the key off and turn it back on, it launches within two seconds, if that. Right. So I always leave that on unless I'm traveling and then I'll, like if I'll park it at the airport, I'll turn this off before I leave. I think after 48 hours it shuts itself off anyhow, but that's all that, you know. Uh, I don't know what 360 switch does. OBD, I would think if I hooked up uh, some kind of tracker in the uh, onboard dynamic support, it would do something, but I don't know. I don't know if that is. Camera front view on, I don't know if that is either. I don't have a camera at the front, so I'm not sure what that means. Oh, I guess that means I could have a front camera instead of the reverse camera, potentially. I don't know. Uh, antenna normally on. Again, I don't know if that does either. Uh, some of the words are wrong here because it's a couple translation issues, maybe, or maybe it's just described poorly. I would assume that means, uh, you know, some cars, the antenna raises or whenever the car turns on, that's an older thing, I guess, but mine's a Jeep, the antenna doesn't move. And regardless, I don't listen to the radio, so I don't give a shit about that control. MCU panel key? I don't know if that does either. The MCU is usually like the brain you want to update the firmware. So, I assume it's something to do with that, but I don't have any updates to install, so I don't know. Unknown sources? That's the standard Android stuff right there that lets you install from unknown sources. So, if I put in my own APK, I can install it. I'm to turn that on. HD reversing video? I don't know what that is. I'll turn it on. See if it looks any better. Oh, I forgot to flip that. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so I don't know what this is. So if I turn it up, it seems to do the same picture either way. I don't know what that does. Uh, I don't know what door lock interface does. I don't know what set light enabled does. I have no idea. Uh, reverse power supply. I also don't know what that does. DVD update. I have no idea what that does. Boot screen logo. That would be, you can change it. It's like when the car first, when the Jeep first beats, boots up, I can change it to Jeep. Um, but it doesn't matter because I use that all sleep, so I never see the screen. I'd only see that in a full reboot. Volume balance setting. That would be, you know, if your radio or your Bluetooth music is way quieter than other stuff, you can adjust these settings. Uh, car model. I think that's only relevant if you have one of the pre built units that are built for a specific model and that would kind of program that stuff for you but I don't have that uh, I don't know what M I don't know what one click setup is MC up MCU upgrade would be if you want to add a firmware upgrade to use it you would use that there touchscreen calibration that just if you you know your touchscreen is off you can adjust it there panel key learning that is to program these I've tried that before and I had some issues with it so I don't know uh, this one maybe is it Right, that didn't work anyhow. I don't know what set screen is. Oh, that's the colors, I guess. Uh, this is again the launcher, but there's only one. Or it's a different password. I don't even know the password of that, so I don't know what that does. So I know a lot about these. I'm not an expert. I don't make these things, so I don't know what that is. Uh, again, a bunch of shit I don't use. USB error detection, sure, this Android thing, I guess. TV type, I don't know what that means. I guess you could buy, like, a TV antenna for these things, but I don't use any of that shit. I don't know what single 360 is. I don't know what activation is. I don't know what original car agreement is. That might be, like, some... What the hell happened there? Oh, this is settings for the vehicle itself, I guess. But those aren't relevant to the way I have mine set up. User, uh, location. That takes you to standard uh, Android location services. Security. Again, this is uh, Google security, uh, Android security settings. You can see it's on the May 5th, 2018 security patch, so not the best. Um... Uh, 
language and input, all this, you know, same stuff, standard Google stuff here, right? If you want to change your keyboard and all that shit, you would do it here. Google settings, self-explanatory, backup and reset. If I want to do a full factory reset, this is where I would go. Uh, or if you wanted to reset something, right? That's what you do. I'm not doing that now. Account just takes you to your standard Android uh, Google account setup, right? System, uh, date and time. Use network provided time zone. So it's tied to the GPS. When I first set these things up, they're always set to China and I gotta change them to my time zone. After that, it seems to work perfectly fine. Like it's 5 p.m. there and it's definitely 5 p.m. here. Accessibility, those are Android controls, developer options, Android controls. About device, this gives you a little more information about it. You can see it's on Android 8.1. It gives you the build number, system info. So if you ever need to update, you would check your version here and then check the current available version from Join's website. And then they would let you know. But I haven't seen an update for this one yet. That takes you to the IMI settings for if you had the SIM card. So the, the device info would, would take you to the IMI, IMEI settings for the SIM cards. Uh, which I don't have set up yet. And that's about all we got. So that's all the settings there. Uh, you know, we're going on pretty long on this video at this point. I have separate videos showing the music, the Bluetooth, uh, the whole shebang, right? Overall, it's a pretty solid head unit. Uh, if you don't mind the look, the, you know, of the, you know, tablet sticking out kind of look. Uh, but, you know, it's solid. Joying is very responsive. They're pretty good. Like I've used to say to Seikane and Joying, Seikane used to be very responsive. They've kind of fallen off the map for me. The SATA, uh as well has kind of gotten less responsive over the time. Or maybe they just get tired of dealing with me. I don't know. But Joying is still pretty responsive. They write back pretty quickly. And they're willing to work with you, I think. And they've been around, I think, longer than most of these other products. So uh, I would highly recommend Joying or the SATA. I haven't had any problems with my say canes, but they've been kind of a dick to me. So I'm not really on the fan of say cane tip anymore. Uh, but as far as uh, joy, like I said, I haven't had any problems with this unit. No crashing. Uh, it gets a little slow compared to this, you know, get, I have high-end phones, the Note 10 Plus. I have the OnePlus 7 Pro. Uh, I have the Google Pixel 3a XL, which isn't a high-end phone, but it's still a quick phone, right? And, you know, I haven't had any, so... It is a little slower than a flagship phone, of course, but it still works pretty good. Sounds pretty good. There's a lot of a lot of things you can do on here you can't do with a regular Android Auto head unit. Like I can just watch YouTube and drive down the street if I want, assuming I have the data connected. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend that, but you can do it. You can bounce in the maps back, bounce in and out of apps pretty quickly. Uh, you know. I think it's a pretty solid head unit, so feel free to leave me a comment with questions, uh, and I'll try to respond the best I can. Alright, thanks for checking me out. Uh, thanks for checking out this head unit, and just let me know if you have any questions, and I'll get back with you as soon as possible. Alright, thanks.